Welcome to the unboxing and first impression video of the 16 inch M1 Pro powered MacBook. Let's start the process. Here's the MacBook Pro packaging with a wallpaper that only partially hides the notch. I chose the silver color with 1TB of SSD, 16 gigs of RAM, 16 GPU cores and 10 CPU cores with 8 performance and 2 efficiency. Let's finally open the box to get a first look at the gleaming silver MacBook Pro. Here you have it. The silver is far more vibrant and appealing to the eye. Aside from the MacBook, we have the Type-C to MagSafe connector. The MagSafe end appears to be slightly thinner than the one we had with, say, the 2015 Retina MacBook Pro. The cable is quite lengthy, that is, you will not need to pay extra for the extension cable. The laptop can also be charged using other Type-C cables, although at a slower speed. Here is some paperwork that, in my opinion, should no longer be included if Apple truly wants to be carbon-free by 2030. This time we have all black Apple stickers which look really cool. This is the 140 watt charging brick with a European plug. It has grown in size and is no longer squarish. It can now charge your mic to 50% in just 30 minutes. That is great. Should you continue to use an extension cable, the plug is also detachable. Let's take off the cover to open the lid and get some first impressions. Take a look at how cool the old black keyboard looks on the silver version. Before I get into the pros and cons, I would like to point out that I'll be posting a teardown video of this machine soon, so make sure to subscribe to get a closer look at the new thermal setup and the chip itself. Okay, here are my initial thoughts. A completely redesigned chunkier MacBook Pro with useful ports and an all new mini LED display with LTPO technology that enables a variable high refresh rate of up to 120Hz. But in terms of promotion, I could barely see the improvement that 120Hz provides in normal non-gaming use and only when you look closely. It's just less obvious when it's not a touch screen. Overall, it's a fantastic display. Peak brightness isn't an issue for mini LEDs, but completely eradicating artifacts like hollows around the dark objects isn't either. The display has now a notch as well, one that could be uglier, but I quickly stopped noticing it. Okay, the new black keyboard looks gorgeous. It is now blessedly drama free. Apple removed the touch bar and replaced it with a function row. The keyboard is surrounded by excellent speakers that can get super loud. What else is great? A 1080p webcam, a lightning fast chip with fans that refuse to run any louder and a great battery life. This MacBook Pro effectively has 16 by 10 display with a little extra at the top for the notch and menu bar. As stated, you stop noticing the notch after only a few minutes, the same way you stop noticing it on your iPhone. However, there's a problem with it. According to several Twitter reports, if you add a lot of icons to the top, they will hide behind the notch. That's not very welcoming, but hopefully a software update will fix it. One final flaw I noticed is that the wallpaper does not extend all the way to the notch. You can see a gap up top. This could be an issue for some people. The ports are fantastic and I'm glad they have returned. Some people have stated that the SD card card slot alone is enough to upgrade but be aware that those ports are not top spec. The HDMI port is 2.0 not the 2.1. The SD card slot is UHS 2 but not the faster UHS 3 or the SD Express. Finally it likes the USB 3.0 port which is still widely used. But all in all the display is great. Minor blooming is an acceptable trade off for these black levels and I think it looks better than Apple's exorbitantly priced Pro Display XDR which has few redeeming zones more blooming and an off-axis color and brightness shift that are truly height. This display has none of these flaws, it's bright, accurate and generally pleasing to the eye. Let us now discuss the chip. Apple has three different types of processing cores, efficiency, performance and the GPU. The M1 chips are all different combinations of same cores with unified memory but the real difference is in the GPUs. The GPU on the regular M1 can have up to 8 cores. The M1 Pro has up to 16 cores while the M1 Max has 24 and 32 GPU cores. Again, the GPU cores are all the same on all of the chips. You simply get more of them as you move up the range. 
range, along with faster memory and higher total limit, as well as specialized video encoders. Additionally, in the system settings of the M1 Max machine, there is a small toggle for high power mode. It simply allows the fans to run at a higher speed for improved cooling. So we have got new MacBook Pros. They are among the best laptops I have ever used, with an unrivaled combination of lightning fast performance and an incredible battery life. Aside from the notch, Apple appears to have returned to reality in terms of design adding some useful ports and removing the touch bar is just smart and practical choices. So what are the cons? The biggest one is the high cost of these machines. However, if you are a pro, the prices may be easier to justify given the performance. But if you only need a laptop for everyday productivity, you can get a lot of laptops for less than 2000 starting price of the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Second, the fact that Apple only includes 16 gigs of RAM in the base model and charges $400 for an upgrade to 32 gigs is just ridiculous. The third is that Apple's transition to its own chip is still in the works. The software ecosystem is still in its early stages. These machines have the feel of the future, but some part of that future is still hazy. Will app developers fully support Apple GPU ideas? This is a question we have been asking since the first M1 chip powered MacBook was released, and we are still waiting for an answer. Okay, that's all there is to it. Thank you for staying tuned. I'll see you in the teardown video of it. Peace.